Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Liz, and I'm one of the members of the Small Business Initiative team here at Treasury. Today, I'm also joined by additional members of our SBI team, Rose Costa, Jennifer Gaval, Michael McLeish, and Andrew Napolitano. I also know that we have former SBI members in our IT team here joining us today. I want to welcome and thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Under the leadership of Treasurer Deborah Goldberg, a group of us here at Treasury were tasked to identify opportunities within Treasury's Small Business Banking Partnership Program to provide additional support to small businesses in Massachusetts. We are really excited to share this resource with you all today. But before I hand it over to Treasurer for kickoff, I wanted to briefly cover our agenda for today. We will do um, welcoming remarks, and then we'll do a website run through, followed by um, the treasurer introducing our amazing panelists this morning. Then we will have our Q&A session, and um, we'll conclude today's event by um, 11 a.m. Without further ado, I will hand it over to the one and only Treasurer Deborah Goldberg for her welcoming remarks. Well, actually, I want to thank the one and only Lizandra Gomes, because from um, the time I actually met you, Liz, you were interested and excited about developing programs and ways in which to support small businesses. And so you and I shared that priority because um, we see it as a way to expand economic opportunity for every Massachusetts resident and to provide the tools that people need to even think about starting their own business. And starting your own business is a, is a roadway to self-sufficiency and economic stability. So we originally identified an opportunity to complement our small business banking partnership, which is a treasury run initiative. Um, our small banking partnership moves about $100 million in state deposits to qualified community banks with the directive that these are to be for loans to small credit worthy businesses. And the idea being fund small businesses and it creates new jobs and creates economic opportunity. This toolkit will provide additional resources to all these small business owners, future entrepreneurs, banks and community partners that support the businesses and offering greater resources to of financial tools ensures we build a more equitable future. This website has three goals in mind. The Small Business Toolkit was developed to empower entrepreneurs to achieve um, their goals. These valuable educational materials will provide new and existing small business owners in Massachusetts with important information the things you need to do and know related to business planning, maintenance, and even growth. So I want to thank everyone across Treasury who's had a hand in getting this website up and running. And I particularly want to thank our panelists for being here to help support the needs of small businesses in our state. Thank you very much, Treasurer Goldberg. And um, it's been a group effort and we're very excited to be here today. And the moment that we've been waiting for is here. We'll be doing, as I mentioned earlier, a walkthrough of the website. Um, Jen, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so here, we'll, we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to listen to our welcome video from the Treasurer herself. And um, Jen, you can play it. There's no sound. All right, if anyone is more tech savvy than me and knows how to share my screen sound, feel free to let me know. Um. Okay, found it. Okay, so let's restart the video. Great. Hi there, and welcome to the Office of the State Treasurer's Small Business Resource Toolkit. I am your treasurer, Deb Goldberg, 
and our team understands the importance of building a support network for small business owners in Massachusetts. We hope that this toolkit will provide valuable information that supports you in how to plan, maintain, grow, and achieve success. Local business owners contribute so much to our economy, playing a vital role in the long-term prosperity of our communities and state. Our goal is to empower entrepreneurs to achieve economic stability, security, and opportunity now and in the future. As you navigate through the toolkit, make sure to visit the resource map to locate banks and community partners in your area. And if you have any questions at all or feedback, please contact us and we will work hard to assist you. So thank you for visiting and I hope you enjoyed this toolkit. Awesome, thank you for sharing that, Jen. Next, we have a snapshot, a quick snapshot um, of the major categories that you'll find on the website. Um, but we also wanted you to see and have a feel of how the website looks like. So we'll be sharing some of those um, other snapshots as we go through. So as you can tell here on the home space, um, we have four major um, categories, planning, funding, managing your business, as well as small business accounting. In each, um, big category, you can identify um, subcategories. Gen yep. So we have examples of vast different um, themes that you can um, look for during planning your business. For example, business plan. Jen, if you could click on that, I just wanted to show folks. Yeah, essentially, we wanted to uh, make sure that we gave a quick intro of what we were going to be discussing when possible, provide people with examples of templates that they could take home and just use it at their own leisure. Um, thanks to different partners that we've been working with, um, such as Harbor One, um, as SBA, we've been able to acquire these templates and share with everyone else. Um, it was very important for us to make sure that the messaging and the content was simple to follow, and hopefully we did um, a good job doing that. Um, Jen, you can go to funding your business. And here you'll find different ways you can finance your business from traditional and non-traditional methods, as well as an information on variety of grants. And we found grants to be a popular topic with people as we were discussing different things for um, during our research. Uh, folks were interested in finding out more about public and government um, funded grants as well as private grant opportunities. Um, managing your business, we, I'm going too fast, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> thank you. So managing your business, there's a variety of topics as well. Um, a really popular one was um, succession, succession planning. We developed this template in-house. Um, Jen worked on it. And it's a very lengthy template, but with the hopes that folks can fill it out at their own time and then plan for what their succession in their business will look like. And another part of that that was very evident during um, the last two years was planning for unforeseeable um, future and in events. Um, the pandemic showed us very clearly that's unfortunately, unfortunately, it's important to, to plan for um, natural disasters and pandemic just in case. And the next um, category is the small business accounting. Um, John, if you could click on the federal and local procurement. So um, during some of the conversations, we realized that folks were really interested in learning how to become small businesses, were interested in how to become vendors with the state and their local municipalities. But a lot of them didn't even know how to go about it. So with this section, we, um, we hope to explain a little bit of what procurement is, the different types of procurement, as well as um, showcase the statewide um, software that folks can go and find information on what's available for procurement within um, the state of Massachusetts. 
and we hope that um, this section and all the other ones can provide more details as people start their business or decide to expand. As mentioned on our invite, our website includes first of its kind small business resource map, which I will quickly um, show you the different ways that you can access it uh, on our website, but Jen will take it over in more details. Um, Jen, I just wanted to go up a little bit all the way. Okay, so you can go to home and you can see on the uh, bar menu, it says small business resource map. We also wanted to make sure it was on the home page on the banner, if um, you could scroll up. So right here, there's a banner. Um, under planning your business, you can also click small business resource map. And in this section here, you will see that there's a brief explanation about business counseling. We provided a video with the instructions on how to use the map, as well as um, accessibility in writing for folks to follow the instructions if they wanted to just read them. And if you click, Jen, on the map itself, our big reveal here is this amazing map that the group over um, this project was able to compile over a thousand uh, resources thus far. Um, and it's categorized by counties in different um, categories of, um, of industries. So um, but no, I don't have anything else to add here, Jen, I'll, let, I'll give it to you. All right, awesome, thanks Liz. So as Liz mentioned, my name is Jennifer Galvao. I've been working with the SBI group for about three years now. So really excited to launch this website. Um, so I'll be going over some special features on our map. Um, in the map, usually the way that I learn is through actually the using whatever it is that I'm looking at, but hopefully the information that I share in the next few slides will be helpful to you all. Um, so once you go onto the map, um, by default, the map will show you your towns, um, which will be color coded, color, -coded, color coded by the number of resources that they have. And so just to kind of give you a clearer picture, I've put a little red circle so that when you go to the map, you kind of know what you're looking for. So the blue, long, blue zones will indicate um, how many resources are within that area. All right. Um, and so you're able to zoom in and out of the map. Um, so by using the plus and minus sign, which you can find on the left hand of your screen, um, and that will allow you to zoom in so that you can see the color coded dots, which I'll talk a little bit more about in the following slides. Um, alternatively, if you have the, a name of an organization um, or a banking partner in mind, you can feel free to enter that address or place into the map and then it'll automatically take you to where that dot is and it'll show you um, a kind of a pop out of more information on what category that business falls under the address, city, phone, email, and, and any other contact information that might help you better um, connect with that organization. Um, so once you zoom in on the map, you're going to see the locations of the resources with the physical address. So kind of what I mentioned um, before. Um, so each time that you press a dot, um, each color is coordinated or organized by um, a category. So for example, the blue dots are usually going to be big category, a business association, and then the subcategory will tell you specifically what type of services that they offer. Um, so I just want to point out some features on the right hand side of the map. Um, so you can use the legend button, which will be a blue square with three bullet points to see the color codes for a resource count and resource category. So as I mentioned previously, each colored circle represents something. So for red, it's a capital provider. For purple, it'll be community development organizations. And then the blue will tell you um, how many resources are assigned or in that particular county or area. Um, the filter button, um, which is a blue square with a funnel shape, um, this can be used to filter resources by county, city or town, category or subcategory. Um, some of the resources don't have a physical address and instead use a PO box. Um, and the filter tool can also be used to only show these facilities within the table. Um, so two more slides before I hand it over to the treasurer. Um, but 
On the right hand side, you'll also see a little icon with the I button, which will be the info button. Um, and this will, this is where you can find information on um, basically summarizing a lot of the information that I've shared in the map run through slides. Um, and then you'll also find, again, just reiterating for each data point, the colored location dot on the map, click on the colored dot on the map, the data point attributes will pop up. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, so at the bottom of the attribute pop-up, um, you can select three little dots, which are right here, if you can see my mouse moving around. Um, and once you press this, you can select three different options. So pan two, which will kind of redirect you to the zone that that resource is in. Um, you can add a marker if there are resources that you wanna pin, you wanna come back to at a later time. Um, and then lastly, um, the third option is to view it in the attribute table. So in that Excel format at the bottom, And then another thing is there is an options button in the upper left corner of the data table. So if you have a list of resources of organizations that you, if you're a visual person and you wanna print out the document, you can go to the options, the drop down, and then export that table just so that you have a physical copy of the form, or even if you wanted to save it on your computer. Um, but that pretty much wraps up our run through for the map. Um, if you want more information on how to use our map, you can feel free to use your smartphone, which I'm sure everyone has. Um, and you can hover it over this QR code here. Um, but I'll also be highlighting the, the website name. So if you wanted to go directly to the website, you can also feel free to do that. But without further ado, I'll hand it over to Treasurer Goldberg to introduce our wonderful panel. You muted, Treasure. Sorry. <laughs> See, I'm trying to follow the rules because I know that you're supposed to be muted when you're not speaking. Um, I, I just want to double check. I want to make sure that Al has joined us. Yes. He's yes, here I'm with here. Us. Oh, great, Al, because it wouldn't be the same without you. Uh, <laughs> So we have several fabulous panelists today, and I'm going to give you a quick background and introduce each of them. Uh, first of all, the, the wonderful and tremendously fun, outgoing, bright, exciting Senator Lydia Edwards, uh, who uh, has really added so much um, by becoming part of our um, team up at the State House. Senator Lydia Edwards will be our panel moderator. But if you didn't know her before, what you should know is she has been a career advocate, an activist, and a voice on behalf of society's most vulnerable, raised all over the world by her military mom. But she chose East Boston for her home. And uh, prior to being uh, in the state Senate, was on the Boston City Council and worked extensively in legal aid. Um, Lydia was a public interest attorney with the Greater Boston Legal Services and focused on labor issues, fighting for access for unemployment insurance, back wages, fair treatment for domestic workers, and combating human tra trafficking. She coordinated a statewide campaign to pass the Domestic Workers Bill of Rights and won. And then following the bill's passage was named Bostonian of the Year, honorable mention by the Globe. Um, Lydia's education goes without saying, um, American University, um, College of Law, LLM, showing she's good and works with numbers too from BU School of Law. And she loves to run along the waterfront and practice martial arts. And sometimes in this one, I was like a little, um, she skydives, but you can tell is Lydia is a go-getter. And we are thrilled, Lydia, I mean, Senator, to have you with us today. I tend to use first names. Um, Al Enschel owner of Elegant Stitches in Pittsfield, migrated to the United States from Ghana in 1988. And by the way, Al, my son lived in Ghana and studied African dance and drumming and lived out in the villages when he was in college. Just wanted to give you that as an FYI. 
Right. Uh, and lived in Bridgeport, Connecticut, moved to Pittsfield in 91, and has settled there since and raised his four sons, AJ, Auric, Adrian, and Alec. I think you like A's. My dad was Avram, so he could have been in the family too. <laughs> Having attended the University of Ghana Lagon and studying business administration at Berkshire Community College, Al is the owner of Elegant Stitches, an embroidery, screen printing, and promotional product company established in 1997 and is in Pittsfield. A founding member of United Africans of the Berkshires, Al is also the president of African Catholic Community of St. Mark's in Pittsfield. Member of the Knights of Columbus, Al enjoys movies, documentaries, and I will let you win at this because I'm not good at it. He is an avid Scrabble player. Um, unfortunately, um, one of our panelists had a medical emergency this morning, so we are not able to have her join us. But we do have our next panelist, Alicia Porcena, who is Director of Small Business in the City of Boston. Um, oversees direct services and programming that support over 40,000 plus small businesses and definitely has her hands full since COVID so seriously impacted particularly small <clears throat> businesses and particularly businesses run by women. In partnership with uh, the community, Alicia builds an inclusive, equitable and accessible economy, hoping that it works for all residents. Alicia's professional career has been focused on addressing inequalities and making sure that communities have the necessary resources to achieve a prosperous future. Her public service career was in constituent services for a good friend of ours, then city councilor Ayanna Presley, now congresswoman, and working at a poverty hotline doing intake for low-income communities. She's led donor relations and partners for health in Haiti, uh, and most recently has served as director of growth, equity, and impact at in Interrise, a Boston-based economic development nonprofit. Alicia, Alicia has done so much that I could go on and on and on, but let's suffice to say a true public servant. Alicia is an innovator, convener, and community build, builder focused on empowering local communities and particularly those underserved and under-resourced with a master's degree from in a master's of arts in public policy from Tufts and she was a neighborhood fellow. She graduated cum laude from Northeastern and is the proud daughter of Haitian immigrants all who currently reside in Dorchester. Samalise Rodriguez, Director of Eastern Massachusetts Women Business Center at the Center for Women in Enterprise, is an equity and inclusion professional and advocate for small women and minority-owned businesses and workforce diversity, focused on her career in, on contract compliance to ensure and expand access and opportunity to competitive contracting and career opportunities, the nuts and bolts of success. Samalise applies her depth knowledge and understanding of EEO, AA, local and federal public procurement laws and regulations to facilitate maximum participation um, in supplier diversity affirmative marketing programs and diverse workforce and trades. She has helped numerous organizations identify and integrate inclusive strategies and workforce diversity practices into core business operations. Um, again, the, what she has done has basically broken through not a glass ceiling, but a brick ceiling, a brick wall, which are literally how we do lips by the small building blocks of getting into the day-to-day -day workings of organizations and areas that just seem ominous to people. Um, 
She's worked for general contractors and large primes, a nonprofit women's business resource center. She brings lean business operation management practices and has done so much in this area that it, she knows exactly how to share with you how to break through for all of this. Um, she's on the advisory board for Stacks and Jewels, a nonprofit for underserved youth. And in, it introduces, just to give you an, a, a brief idea of just how one of these organizations she works with, they introduce coding and workforce development, upscaling for HVAC, and building automation systems. That's just one group that she's worked with that shows you that she's getting into the weeds and helping people get into those jobs and get into those areas. She's a child of Dominican Im immigrants, first generation, and raised in the city where my grandfather grew up, Lawrence, Massachusetts, but she currently resides in Boston a BA in International Studies, Comparative Development from Trinity College in Connecticut with a concentration in human rights in French. She has a professional certificate in diversity and inclusion for human resources from Cornell. Sam Elise is a connector and she's here to share so much with us today. So I know the introductions were long, but we are so honored to have incredibly talented people who have done so much that I want to make sure that all of you know that when you hear from them, they know the real deal and are here to share it with you today. So Liz, I assume I turn it over to our, our friend and our colleague, State Senator Lydia Edwards. Lydia. Yes. Well, um, good morning, everyone. I'm just confirming everyone can hear me just fine. Yep. All right. Yes. So um, I, again, want to thank the treasurer for this wonderful opportunity, uh, not just to be a panelist, but also to um, really take a massive resource of this website, introduce it, but and also say, let's not just introduce it and walk away. Let's talk with people who are on the ground, who are doing the work, get their response to the website, but also what are the practical realities that they are encountering so that we are gonna inform the website and make sure it's a truly usable uh, resource. So I wanna thank you, Secretary, and I wanna thank your whole team uh, for setting this up. So getting right to it, since we have these wonderful experts, we have a local business person, we have someone who works in government with business, and we also have a nonprofit all on the ground. Let's start with some major challenges that you each see. Maybe have us list two so that we can move the conversation a little bit in this half hour. Two major challenges that you see in terms of um, helping to find um, business owners as a business owner or as a nonprofit, what are major challenges you have experienced in general, just maybe in starting or connecting to resources? We'll start with Alfred. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here today and to share my experience. And thank you, Madam Treasurer, for the nice introduction and everyone here. This is a wonderful morning to showcase what the state can do for all of us. This is a remarkable achievement. So all those who were involved in putting this together, kudos to you for a great job done. Because if something like this existed 25 years ago when I started my business, I think I wouldn't have gone through all the struggles that I went through. I've check the website and it's well done. And the resources there is remarkable. So I will encourage everyone listening or watching to go there and visit and spread the news. Now, the question is, what are some of the problems that those of us that are on the ground will face? We all know that funding or capital is a key or the blood of any business without funding or without capital, you can't move far as a business owner or anyone starting a business. And so that aspect is something that everyone will at one point go through. 
And this is where we need a link, a strong link for small businesses, especially minority owned businesses to be able to access this and develop their business. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would say to um, Ms. Rodriguez, Samilas, same, same question. Two challenges that you find on the ground as a nonprofit or leader trying to help cultivate businesses. Absolutely. Thank you for having me today. Good morning, everyone. I think some of the major challenges I've seen personally have to do with these knowledge gaps that exist uh, for entrepreneurs and small business owners. Um, you know, to start a business, for example, there may be, you know, 12 steps that we know about, but uh, as a result of not having a legacy of business ownership in communities of color, we know that step one actually consists of step 1A, 1B, 1C, and then maybe 1D before you actually get to step two in terms of properly setting up your business. Um, and so, you know, that can lead folks to start skipping steps and ultimately cultivating um, bad business habits, which you don't want to get started, you know, uh, doing once you're getting your business off the ground or actually ever, you don't want to cultivate uh, bad habits. So I think these knowledge gaps that exist can, you know, cause a ripple effect um, and lead to just, you know, kind of snowball into bigger issues. And I would, also pose the same question to Alicia um, at the city of Boston specifically, I, I think, but adding a little bit more of a question about, because oftentimes you're the resources people are seeking, right? You're the resource provider. So when people come to you, what do you see as some of the challenges um, that they're facing? Oftentimes being the person that's supposed to be providing the grants or the guidance. Thank you so much and good morning, everyone. Uh, great question. And I think both Al and Samilis answered beautifully in the sense that um, funding and then that knowledge gap is something that we see every day. I would also pinpoint and say that um, making sure that we're getting the information about our resources uh, that we have to every neighborhood, to every community and making sure um, business owners understand a standard is also one of the gaps that we see, whether um, it's language accessibility or um, issues with just understanding the, the process. I believe that is one of the biggest gaps we see because we do have programs and we have um, workshops, but if no one is coming to them, that, that is one of the biggest, what are, a big problem as well. So just piggybacking on some of the, now that we've identified some of the, the issues, I think I'm, I'm really curious because we, we do, we are honored to be in a state that's very diverse. I don't know, speaking how many languages, um, I think two, or actually maybe all three of our panelists are immigrants or immigrant descendants, right? And what we're seeing is an, the same immigrant spirit, the industriousness within immigrants of all generations and all backgrounds. So how are we making sure if there are some things that you could say tomorrow, we need to make sure that we are accessing and, and helping to guide immigrants. And the best way to do that is blank. And I, I ask this question, not because um, Americans who are generations of here aren't industrious and aren't excited, but what we find here is oftentimes the beginners of the first businesses are immigrants right, in their families. So I, I want to capitalize on that immense amount of potential as we're getting more diverse and immigrants are still coming to the Commonwealth. So what could we be doing to build that bridge even stronger? Um, we started with Alfred. So let's start with Samalis this time. I love that question, Senator Edwards. Um, I think, you know, I completely agree. We see a lot of foreign born persons coming to CWE for different kinds of technical assistance. And I think the biggest hurdle other than the language barrier question that um, uh, Alicia mentioned is really um, the need for uh, someone to facilitate the administrative process, the administrative burden that goes along with 
you know, registering your business or, you know, uh, pulling a, a state uh, tax ID, uh, IRS tax ID number for your business. Um, a lot, uh, there's a, a la almost a resistance to translate um, a lot of these forms and, and, and databases into other languages, of course, you know, with, with reason, right? But I think that there are other ways that we can be creative around helping people facilitate that process in their own language. And so I think maybe we can do a better job of, you know, thinking about that uh, and, and helping address that question. Excellent, thank you. Um, we'll go to Alfred. Thank you for the question. That's a, a very good question and especially someone that is foreign born, the experience that comes with it and starting a business as well. That question is a very important question. But as we also know that immigrants usually kind of populate in some areas. And so getting into that community and sharing this information with that community goes a long way because that's the only way. Once they find out the information, they can share among themselves. So my best, um, from my experience, is sharing this information in those communities, finding the associations that links these communities and sharing that information. And I think it will go a long way. Yes. It's a good point. Um, Alicia. Yes, and I would say that, um, you know, patience is really important. And so thinking about the process, it's not kind of, I'm going to come in and do one thing and then I'm ready. And so really understanding and setting expectations when we're working with business owners is so key. And we, we you know, one of our goals is to meet people where, where they are. And like Alfred said, that's out in the community. So I think um, what's something that we could do right now is partnering better with people who um, are doing great work with immigrants in the local community who have already built the trust and then working with them um, to create more programming. And then one other thing that I think we could do is making sure the information we have is readily um, communicable. So making sure that we, if we have a flyer, it's downloadable and that they can share it um, via WhatsApp or just by any weeds means. And so it's, it's easier to share the information and you don't always have to um, take three steps to get the information. All very good suggestions. And if I could just quickly summarize, what I'm hearing is that uh, when it comes to this incredible resource of having immigrants from all over, uh, you the resources, the potential, the excitement, and also the energy that a lot of first generation uh, immigrants are bringing, because many of them are coming here to do so many good things that they may have felt that they were unable to someplace else. Um, and so here we have this wonderful opportunity, but let's make sure, as Samalee said, to uh, make sure that the energy, the excitement, and the hard work ethic that we know is there is matched with guidance for the administrative burdens that come along with this. There is a lot of paperwork, right? And a lot of people, you know, being a hard worker and being very passionate about something, if you don't fill your paperwork out, if you don't do the taxes, if you don't understand every year you got to file for your LLC, all of these little things, your business and passion could could fail despite how hard you're willing to work. And then what we learned from, from Alfred is, and I've learned this too as legal services, is oftentimes the most trusted person in the community is another person from the community. So while having websites, while having resources on Facebook and Twitter and you know booths out there, oftentimes what you'll have to do is that extra step and meet them at whatever festival that people are going to, train ambassadors within the community to bring your resources to the community because they're already trusted, whether it's a pastor, whether it's a youth worker, whether whatever it is, but oftentimes it's true. The person they're gonna trust the most is a person that's in the community, it's normal. And then from Alicia, we're also realizing that when you take those two aspects, we need to also set realistic expectations. I mean, who isn't on fire for the American dream? Who isn't on fire and ready to get going and expecting the businesses to take off? But we know what businesses, the likeliness for them to succeed and how long it takes to turn a profit. These are things um, that aren't. I was never raised with culturally to understand. I just thought business, money. 
right? And so in many cases, having a patience, understanding the resources and understanding what success is, it's a little thing sometimes that you know you had two customers today and really being able to understand those resources. So this is, this is incredibly helpful uh, for a lot of people who are starting. So let's talk about now your business is up and running. Let's talk about some of those challenges, right? You have people who start businesses, then you have people in that middle age, maybe we'll call it five years, five to 10 years of their business, it's about to grow. Talk to me about some of those challenges when you're seeing that someone's succeeded in keeping their business open and is now trying to come to some level of scale. Okay, and how, um, and, and I'm seeing on the resource, how many of these toolkits are gonna be necessary for people to have and access. So let's start with Alicia. We, we wanna bring our small business that is successful a little bit to scale. What do we need to do to make sure that we do? What, what, what are the pitfalls that people fall into? And so with that, I think um, planning is so important and a good, uh, a good avenue for that is technical assistance. So the state and also the city has a variety of technical assistance programs and that really meeting with a mentor, reading, meeting with a coach, identifying what growth looks like is so important as well um, as you try to go to the next stage and not kind of going growing too quickly because um, that often does happen. And so um, I think planning and, and using TA providers and the small business resource centers that are that are available to, to see what that next step and outline that is, is imperative. Excellent, excellent. Um, we'll go to um, Samilis. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, we've seen um, that, that it can be challenged to go through a growth phase, um, you know, just like it was when we were 12, 13 years old. And I think that in Boston in particular, um, you know, I've seen um, with some businesses that are selling, um, you know, that need storefronts, right, that are in food or, um, you know, retail, um, and they're really having a hard time keeping their storefront um, or finding a new commercial space to lease or purchase. So I think that question around real estate is something that's becoming very real to a lot of small business owners pushed out of certain communities and having to not only strategize, you know, the growth aspect, but then now think about, you know, if they have to relocate, but a new marketing strategy essentially for a new, a whole new set of clients in another area. So it can, again, snowball issues um, for small business owners when these greater societal issues like, the availability of real estate in, in Eastern Massachusetts is, is, is coming, it, it's, a, it's converging together. So that's, that's what I would say. Thank you, and Alfred? Yes, I'll piggyback um, Elisha what she said. Technical assistance, um, Elegant Stitches is going through its, its own growth spur after 25 years. And once that scaling started, we needed support and Boston Foundation, these are some of the things that help. There's an organization like the um, Foundation for Business Equity gave us a technical assistant who every week will go through our numbers, work with us and coaching us as to what to do next. So these technical assistants are very critical, especially when you're going through growth. And I can't say, enough about the need for that and also growing too big too soon so through that technical assistance questions came about what are you going to do when you get to this level or do you have enough space or do you need to relocate all these things and you have the capital to help with that growth so technical assistance is very very important because it keeps you on a path you may have a business plan but when the growth is getting out of control, sometimes you don't have the inside technical support to handle the growth. You will need an outside help. Thank excellent, you. excellent. So again, if I can summarize what I heard is, you know, planning from Alicia, you absolutely need to have continued and constant planning, which results in um, on the ground, 
guided technical assistance so that someone is sitting there setting expectations, looking at things and also planning for, which is very likely happening to a lot of businesses on the east, um, on the eastern in eastern Massachusetts, which is business displacement. That's what we're finding is that there's a displacement happening, either their population that services them and comes to them for their the barber shop or whatever food or the bodega is their customer base is being displaced or they themselves physically are being displaced because they can't afford the rent. And so this is these are incredible resources that we need to be planning for all of these things with the technical assistance. So. Um, now I'm going to kind of bring it back then to where this all started again to the wonderful resource that we now have our the website. And I'm really hoping each one of you can talk to a little bit more about what this how this website you see as a practical reality will help you and I'll probably after as we get through this um, set um, of responses, then we're gonna probably, I think, turn it over to the audience or turn it over to see if there's any other questions outside of you know, my brain. So right now, let's go to the website and um, love to hear from, we'll start with um, Alfred again, in terms of resources that you think, um, and this is gonna be helpful for, for small business owners. Okay. Oh, I thought you were going to share the screen. So then those that are watching could see the website, how it's been structured. Because one of the great aspects of this website is for instance, if someone is actually starting a business, there's the business plan section there that it shows you step-by-step step what you need to do. These are very fundamental and it's needed, especially when you are starting. Then you go down, it shows you, you are scaling. Now you need technical assistance. Where do you go? All these things are lined up right there. So that's why initially when I was speaking, I said, I wish this was there 25 years ago. So that is what we need. And you have done an incredible job. Thank you. Um, we'll go to Alicia. Thoughts on the website? Yeah, I mean, so I had a chance to go through the website with Liz and um, Jennifer, and the I think one the map is beautiful in the sense that it allows you, you know, to figure out where one where your business is, and then the resources that are pertain to there, um, and and that's so important when you meet somebody, you want to have that interaction be. Um, good and so being able to to point someone in the right direction or point someone to resources is, is is so important and i think this website does that by really putting in together a lot of people who are doing amazing work and 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 just putting it in one platform so it can all be there excellent thank you and then samilis yeah i agree with alicia i think you know, I put a big red star in my notes about that map. I think it's an awesome tool. There's so many resources in Massachusetts alone that's so difficult to, you know, navigate through. And that map just makes it a lot easier. Um, I know that I'll personally be using the website and referring our clients to the website. I think the way that it's set up, it's a nice complimentary offering to the uh, services and resources that CWE provides. Um, you know, we provide things like live workshops on business planning and, and 10 week courses. So if you go to the website and that business plan looks like something you may be interested in, I would say come to our website. Sometimes you need to have more guided instruction. So you can sign up for one workshop and listen to one of our professionals talk about the business plan. Um, or sign up for one of our multi-week courses to actually fill out that template that you downloaded uh, on the state um, treasurer's website or use one of ours. But the idea is that we use um, all of the information that we have in a complimentary fashion and help you know, each other fill in the gaps because obviously we can't you know, um, have all of the information for all of our needs in one place. So we definitely need to be aware of what we each offer and definitely create a, you know, some sort of referral uh, network and pipeline uh, amongst ourselves. Excellent. I mean, the website is, 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 is doing what it's, it's supposed to do, which is to be an assistant 
for those who already have the excitement, the potential and the ideas, and for someone to be able to set that realistic expectation. So this is the foundation I'm gonna have to uh, have to create, but also what I love the most is this is who is providing those resources to you right now and around you so that you can go beyond and just make the appointments and get to those resources. So it's a resource connector as well as provider. Um, wait, there's one question that came in on the chat earlier that I didn't see, but I wanted to get to it. And this is, and it will probably end with this question, um, but quick thoughts. Are there, this is from Samira or Samira Dolan. Are there any initiatives to connect with the next generation of business owners? For example, middle high schoolers um, sharing with our kids. How are we preparing the next generation? Because I mean, honestly, they keep saying with the way technology is going, there's some jobs that aren't even invented yet. Right, that people are, our kids are going to have one day. So, what are we doing to meet that moment? Just thoughts. Um, we'll go with uh, Alicia, and then uh, Samalis, and then we'll conclude with Austin. That's a great question. I know we had a program um, more recently last year where we partnered with um, the like youth in, in the workforce um, development team, but it's something that we're definitely looking into and in how we can um, how we can support the next generation of of small business owners. And um, it's it's going to probably start through workshops and trainings and just um, kind of getting your feet wet and immersing them into that as that's that's kind of how we would go about it. Exciting. Um, and I think it's really necessary that those workshops start early in high school and middle school. So, um, Samilis? I love this question as well. Um, I think teen entrepreneurship is, is so important. It's already happening um, every day all around us. And CWE this year partnered with the Possible Zone in uh, Boston, yeah. as well as the Chica Project and Big Brothers Big Sisters of Eastern Mass to put together um, our first annual Teen Entrepreneurship Summit for Girls. And it took place at the Possible Zone in JP. And it was a wonderful uh, day event of like Alicia was talking about workshops and um, we had speakers come in. Um, there was net, uh, networking um, that took place as well. And because CWE is such a diverse place, um, our clients, actually um, were able, one of our clients who has a financial services, um, I'm sorry, financial instruction uh, consulting business, she, her programming is actually designed for teenagers. So she was able to come in and lead some workshops um, that were very relevant and, and the kids loved it. So we, that's something that we hope to continue um, you know, every year going forward. Well, that's exciting. What was the date again for that? That was on September. Uh, that was September 22nd, I believe. If I remember correctly, well, I or 24th. Definitely... Yeah. Well, I can act and I just want to make sure that we promote it for next year. Look for that uh, coming together. And I can't imagine how there might even one day be a youth section on this website for young people, young entrepreneurs, maybe. I don't know, secretary. Um, maybe that'll be something that we can. <laughs> have the kids develop and how they want to start a business or get involved. Um, and so, and um, Alfred, what are your thoughts? Oh, what a wonderful question. If I, if I continue with this, I could go on and on, but I will tell you a quick story here. My oldest son, AJ, started um, an organization here in the Berkshires to help minority owned businesses. And it's called um, Berkshire Black Economic Council. And what it does is it's bringing all the black and minority businesses under one roof here in Berkshire County. And they open up an office where young black and colored entrepreneurs could go there after school to learn business and get some ideas if they have any questions. And guess what? A young lady who started a candle business is now, I think she is talking to some of these big companies to scale and sell her candles across the country, which is, I mean, she's in high school. So, I mean, 
this question brings about that we have the next generation actually gearing up to fill in the gap when we are not here. So the support structure, if it is there, I'm sure will help. So treasurer, that's some of the things we'll be calling on you for the support to get these organizations going. And thank you. Well, that is a wonderful transition, honestly. It's a, nothing but gratitude and excitement. And again, allowing for us to suggest things, but also talk about what we're so excited about with this new resource. And I wanna thank and turn over uh, the panel to our um, wonderful treasurer, um, Deb Goldberg, for thanking again for the opportunity to moderate for these incredible resources and individuals, Alfred, Sam Elise, and Alicia bringing us all together. And um, I just wanted to say thank you. And I'm gonna turn it back over to you um, and I hope we are going to only continue this conversation. Well, uh, Senator, I want to really thank you for joining us. You're a great moderator. And so because you were so good, we're going to tap you again. So there you go. Uh, because I only see this as the beginning, not the end. We in our office don't just do one shot deals here. And in fact, integrate all of our initiatives across our offices in order to develop higher impact and create these kind of opportunities that we're all touching upon today. I mean, this initiative gave us uh, the ideas of it, the seeds of it, as I mentioned earlier, came from an already established small banking partnership. But we said, we need to be able to do more. It's great that we put money into local banks and we tell them that they have to loan money. But if people out there don't know the first things and the first steps of how you begin to develop the business, they're not in a position to go in and access the loans. And so that's where this whole idea came from. And some of the other questions and comments I heard today were engaged with elsewhere. For example, in our Office of Economic Empowerment, all of our financial education um, programs, whether it's for kids, whether it's for high school students, whether it's for empowering women, are all different pieces of how you end up having success, personal success, and how you manage your way through that. And so we look at this initiative as another piece in the toolbox and so it's very exciting that it came together today, but it is not by far not the only thing that we are doing and will be doing. So I, again, we're at um, 11. I double checked the chat and the questions. Oh, there's one new um, comment from Christian Conroy to everyone, the state director of Massachusetts Small Business Development Center. And so I want hope somebody picks that up. Uh, but what I want to say is, please, all of you who are attending the webinar and all of you who have participated today, please stay engaged. We cannot do this on our own. And we want to continue being able to support small businesses. It's the vitality of our state. You hear about all the big corporations and the big hospital employers and the high tech and this and the that, but there's nothing like small business. My family started in a small business in the North End of Boston and that, and it grew and it had jobs for people and they had people sleeping under this, their store roof. So that's what it's about. And so um, thank you all. I want to thank the team who works with me for everything you've accomplished thus far. And I can't wait to see um, what you accomplish moving forward on this initiative. So I have to mention, as I've said goodbye, we have one more question here in the chat. Um, something about EIDL loans coming due. Can someone get back to Paula on that, Paula Palowski on that issue? But thank you all and to be continued. All right, thank you, Treasurer, and thank you to our wonderful panelists and Senator Lydia Edwards for moderating. Um, so I know that we're a bit over time, um, but before we close off, we did wanna take some time. Um, sorry, I think my slides are going the opposite way. 
Um, so as the treasurer mentioned, we were able to answer the questions that were put into the chat box as well as the Q&A section. So thank there, you to those. There is one last question. I just read it out loud. Yeah. Um, so Paula asked, perhaps mention EIDL loans coming due. Um, and Paula, if you wanted to just enter into the chat, do you mean sharing this inf more on this information on our website? Or was this a specific question to a panelist? Okay, sharing it on our website. So yes, that's definitely something that we'll keep in mind. Um, and just as kind of a reminder, our website will be evolving, we'll be adding new information. Um, so feel free to let us know if you have any. And in the following slide, I'll share how you can do that. Um, but before we log off, I did want to take some time to thank everyone who has helped to make our website possible from our community partners, our banking partners, the small businesses that joined our roundtables, um, our website development team, which consisted of in-house, um, our in-house IT team, um, as well as our SBI members, um, past and current, some who are no longer with Treasury um, and those who are still working here. Um, without your help, um, this would not have been possible. And I know that in addition to your jobs, it, this required extra time and dedication. So of course we appreciate all of the dedication that you put into this project. Um, and then we also had some questions about how to stay in contact. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today, um, you can feel free to take your uh, smartphone and scan it over this QR code. And this will take you directly to our website, which is now live. Um, if you also wanted to write it down on a piece of paper, um, the website address is www.smallbusinessma.org. Um, I know that there were a few folks in the chat who had some recommendations of things that they think would be really valuable for us to add to our website. So of course, if you have any questions once you do review the website, suggestions or recommendations on things we should add moving forward, you can feel free to email us at smallbusinessma at tre.state.ma.us. Or if you wanted to email individuals directly, you can feel free to email Lysandra Gomes at lgomes at tre.state.ma.us. Or you can feel free to email me at Jennifer Galvao, um, jennifer.c.galvao at tre.state.ma.us. And of course, we are planning to keep this conversation going. Um, so we are brainstorming webinars, small business virtual sessions, and much more. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, just continue visiting our website if you want to send us an email directly. Um, and yeah, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. And based on the webinar, we should be able to pull an attendance report. So we'll be sure to follow up with information from today's session. But um, again, I wanted to thank our wonderful panelists, our panelist moderator, our treasurer, um, as well as the team that I've been able to work with over the these last few years. It's been an absolute pleasure. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. Thank, thank you to you. the best panel today. It was awesome. And thank you to everyone. Everyone. Thank, you. thank you, everyone. Team. Big shout out to our Massachusetts Treasurers uh, IT team. Without them, this would not come together. Mm -hmm. So I want to give them a big, big shout out. And everyone who's been part of this team, past at current. I know we have friends that are online today. Um, so thank you so much for, for believing in this project and Treasure for giving us the, the liberty to actually bring it to life. So we appreciate you. And to the best team that's here online today, the panels and the SBI team. Mm -hmm. Hope everyone has a great, 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 great day. Oh, well done, everyone. Thank, have a well, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you all bye -bye. too. Bye. Thank you. For the opportunity. Bye -bye. All thank right. Thank you. Thank you.